I invited 100 eager Minecraft players to recreate civilization. I split them into three different regions, and at the end of the video, we're going to find out which civilization survives till the end. Everyone is also in hardcore mode, meaning players only have one life, so if you die, you're out. This is Minecraft Empire Civilization. Our story today begins in the tundra, with beautiful floating islands, large spruce trees for early wood gathering, and a dedicated village to host the vikings. This put the tundra in the best starting position. Each region is separated into different colonies that come with different advantages and disadvantages. For the tundra, the vikings have a permanent health increase. They can highlight an enemy player for a short period of time after a successful hit, but the drawback is the vikings are slow. For the swamp, the goblins have a permanent speed boost, fortune won on their pickaxes, but reduced reduced from 10 hearts down to 8. Lastly, for the desert slash mushroom plains, the dryads have permanent night vision, a slow fall speed, and after consuming mushroom stew gives them a strength buff for one minute. But the best thing you can do is subscribe to my channel and gain the buff of being selected for future civilization videos. Also, join our discord, it's in the description. Learning about their new skills, the vikings were quick to take action. The group decided they should farm and gather resources. Some went mining or raided the village, and others started fishing to get food for the region. Heading over to the swamp, the goblins started working working on figuring out a game plan and headed down caves to extract valuable resources like coal and iron. The swamp also contained a small town that had three safe huts on the edge of their border, so this is where they decided to set up camp. For old grumpy goblins, they were so far the smartest of the three regions. The goblins started extracting the kelp from the ocean to quickly make it into a food source, ending the problem of starving to death, and with limited hearts, they need to always stay at max health. Lastly, at the beautiful desert and mushroom plains, the dryads decided they would stick together as numbers were their greatest strength. This is where I found previous Civilization winner Untick and ex-Desert leader Tripster from my last Civilization video start to formulate a plan for world domination. Tripster! Oh, hey! Hey! How's it going? Epic. Good, how are you, Tripster? Welcome back. What do you have in store for us? What do I have in store for you? Absolutely. I mean, you were the last Desert leader. This is the Desert Mushroom Plains. I hope you enjoy your guys' region. This region's really nice. I am I thoroughly enjoy it. We have iron blocks, I see, which is very helpful. Good, good, yeah. We're vibing right now. After talking with Tripster, a couple desert members started to work on how to govern this region, saying they are now the sand people. We're gonna eat sand and prosper, and we're gonna mine iron. We're gonna get everybody kitted out. We're, we're gonna eat all the mushroom That's stew and all the, the sand. We're gonna win this thing, boys. As the first night set, players were really getting a grasp on how to survive. The next morning, these civilizations really began to flourish, and it was time to elect a leader. So, who would rule over these lands? This first mini event was a leader event. Each region would elect one leader, and once selected, a Protection 5 Unbreakable Crown would be delivered to them. Starting with the desert, a podium was built where the candidates for leadership would be discussed. Luckily for the people of the desert, they were all in coordination with each other. Well, at least for the moment. As you may know, I am the the tripster, all right? Listen, I've had experience in this, okay? Last time, I made the nation of steam, and it went super well. You can just, yep. It Did went it really though? well. Eric, I need you to mute your mic. No. Anyway, let our opponents, let our okay, opponents okay, campaign. Listen, okay, listen. Basically, what's gonna happen this time is, listen, you vote me, I'm gonna eat at least 20 shovels full of uh, just sand. Untick won the event last time, so yeah, vote for us. See, the deliberation here is either the, the sand shaman or the guy who, made the failed steam nation and the winner of last event wow i yeah, don't like the know. choices trips are over here trips are, tri trips are over here boys. yeah over here everyone come on you guys know you gotta want to vote for me did i win after delivering his crown, tensions inside the desert immediately rose. There was a seeker group that believed Tripster was against everything that Sand stood for. So without hesitation, players Yeetspeak and Flufio2 began attacking Tripster. How does it feel to be king now? Well, I was in before- ah! Ah! Kill the traitor! Kill the traitor! What the- No! Help! He's help a, he me. hates Sand! Oh, Kill him! He hates oh, Sand! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, please! Oh, no, please! Oh, no, please! No, please! No, please! Oh, no, please! In less than five minutes, the desert had already murdered one of its own and completely divided the region. This would create a dictatorship under the new leader, Floofy. Tripster got assassinated. No, no, he did not. Yes, no, he did. It's a dictatorship now. What happened? I leave for five seconds. This man, okay, hold up. He created the steam in the last season. You know what steam's made of? Water. Yeah. You know what we hate? Water. We love oh. sand. We eat sand. He wouldn't mm. even eat sand on camera. So, God, apparently you're trying to leave. Is that 
Essentially, yeah. We don't particularly yeah, trust we the don't. man who assassinated our, like, democratically elected leader yeah. instantaneously. This dictatorship went under the name the Desert Shaman. Hello. Hello, What's the up? people Hi. of the sand. We're gonna build the Hi. temple, boys. We're building a sand temple, my children. Do you need help? Oh, oh yeah. God. Like Amazing. Heading to the tundra, I was quite surprised to find out the region was split up into many groups. Tundra member Perpy explained how the group has been split up since the start and called for the election of leadership in their village's square. There is my favorite admin. Look, hey, Oh, There's PvP is on. Oh, isn't that isn't that crazy? I killed an admin. After building a small area to hold an election, some candidates, including Perpy himself, would climb up the charts. So as you know, in the last event, right, I was the leader of the jungle nation. Where are you? Yes, we had a shadow puppet leader named Sophie. I was the one who created the greater pact of multiple nations. Hey. Yeah, and we won, right? Untick was the person who was protecting me. <laughs> And he won. That's a good point. That's a good point. I've that's, also that's killed an admin twice now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's a good oh, You got my vote, brother. Okay. Yeah, yeah. so right, I'm done. Up. After a few other Vikings pitched their reasons for leadership, everyone knew who the obvious leader was. But right before delivering Perpy's crown, an assassination attempt on his life was at stake. Hey. No! Uh, well. No! No! no. 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 What did you do? I just TP'd him. Perpy, we, need we need to take this into our own hands now. This is bad. I'll take his place. Okay, who, who killed him? Can we all unanimously agree? What do you mean? No, you didn't hear my speech. I did, and I don't care. Can y'all scoot back? Can y'all scoot back? Whoa. Hey, Napo. Hey, 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 stop. Stop hitting Napo. Oh, never mind. Oh my god. With already three players slaughtered, things were not looking up for the Tundra. But with his persuasive skills, Perpy de-escalated the situation and put future plans into motion. After traveling to the swamp, it appeared the goblins had already come up with a leader, or rather in their district, a president. Okay, Woff, you want to make your speech? Okay, so I've been wanting to run for, pre for president slash leader since the start. I want a government that is clean. Oh. Let me get my Google note up. Let me get my note up. <laughs> um, <laughs> did have nice. before. If you have a suggestion, I will listen to that suggestion. If it's a bad idea and everyone that agrees that it's a bad idea, then we won't um. do it. If it's a good idea and everyone agrees that we should do it, then, it's a, then we'll do it. That's like democracy. Who's running against me? <laughs> no one. <laughs> is he running on pose? All right, Waff is king. At first glance, Waff seemed like the best person in the region to take leadership. The group was, however, split, and only about 15 to 20 Swamp members were part of Waff's leadership circle. The rest were either on their own as an independent, surviving in the region, mining in small groups, or gathering as many resources as possible. A couple of the goblins began making defense systems for their region gates. You might have noticed these bedrock frames at the edge of each region, and those were put into place as a door connecting region to region. And in between these regions were small islands containing luxury valuables, enhanced weapons, but more on that later in the video. Up until this point, the civilization seemed to only have interior problems, but to make matters worse, I had an evil plan. As nighttime rose, the first major world event would start, and this was the Deadly Blood Moon. During this event, players would experience a permanent night, as well as hostile mobs doubling their spawn rate. In the tundra, Leader Perpy and his group were overswarmed with hostile zombies, skeletons, creepers, spiders, you name it, they were facing it. So they quickly built a small bunker in the center of their village. It sort of seemed like a nuclear bunker as almost everyone in their region gathered there, but they soon would still, however, take on casualties as mobs would leak in through small gaps in their not-so-safe bunker. Hey, put what? your shields up! Put your shields up! Put your shields up! Over at the swamp, the players fortunately were quick to take action and decided to hunker down in the three huts. Although it was smart to gather here, the mobs would quickly follow. Like the tundra, these swamp hunts unfortunately weren't the safest at keeping mobs out. They barricaded doors and windows, yet still took on tragedies. Oh, they're coming oh from the top? God, they're coming yeah. from the top. <laughs> no! No! Oh my, oh my god, Crispy got killed by that too. Guys, oh, guys, guys, died. creepers and everything are going up the top, so you, we need to board up, okay? It's, it's happening a lot over there. However, in the desert, Floofy was planning on building a sand temple. They would move all of their valuable resources, including Sandy the Mushroom Cow mascot, oh. inside. This was a huge advantage to the desert region as they now had dedicated shelter. So when the Blood Moon came, they swarmed and gathered in the temple. Some people decided to guard outside and slay the mobs that approach. Players who weren't hiding out in the temple or outside 
dryad guarding it were ordered to mine for valuables like diamonds. This upset some of the dryads and weren't happy where Fluffy's dictatorship was leading them. Minutes felt like hours, but when the sun finally rose, the deadly blood moon was over. Approximately one third of the entire server was wiped out due to this event. Returning to the desert, God Awful's group was fed up with Fluffy's tyranny. They even managed to recruit Untick, who was the winner of my last civilization video. The new group of seven decided to take matters into their own hands and confront Fluffy. Oh my god, look at this building! Yo, what's up? What's Yo, up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Oh, you guys have enchantments. Yeah, yeah, I see that you also have enchantments. My children, come inside the temple and come before me. My guards, stand by me. Dude, this I is bring, this I is sketchy as bro. Be careful. Yeah, I have some questions to ask the uh, seven or so of my of my great sand children that have separated from the main group. Where have oh, you all been? Me. We've been mining in the caves. We went looking around for iron or diamonds. And... Do you all still worship worship the will of sand? Yes, of we are still we are yeah. still people Indeed. of the sand. Weirdly enough, they ended the beef and decided to join forces to stay unified as the sand people. After some some time passed, the newly elected leaders wanted to host a diplomatic meeting to introduce themselves as well as discuss important topics. So, how are you guys doing today? Good, we're good. We, we're doing pretty we just good. Love pretty sand. good. We uh, founded, we love sand. Sand's a way of life for us. Yo, let me just spread oh. the sand. Spread the oh, love. Wow. Thank you wow. so wow. much. Yeah, can you give me, me, me a piece of sand? You know, instead of saying hey, spread the here, love, take it all. spread the of sand. Course. Okay. Wouldn't you like a signature <laughs> shield okay. of our nation? Yes, of course. It's like beautiful, ours. but it, it, it doesn't have enough Ooh. yellow. With all the fun and games out of the way, it was now time for a real discussion to take place. Who would eventually rule the entire server? So what's, okay, what's y'all's plans for the future? Yeah. Also, Sandland, we spread the gospel you... of, our, of our Lord and Savior, Sandy, the Lord, the God of the so Sand. So are you making like a desert resort or are you just making oh, like yeah. a desert empire? Yeah, there's going to be lots of attractions well, at Sandland. Yeah. What happened to Tripster? So See, what yeah. happened? What happened? He wouldn't eat sand. And um, he had the audacity to claim that he will eat 20 shovels of sand. I am the sand eater. I have put sand in my toes, in my eyes, in my heart. My blood is 95% sand, 1% oh, yeah. yeah. rock. You guys yes, yes, are, yes. are foreign to us, so we have no yeah. expectation here to follow our practices, although we fully condone practicing of sand lovers. The plan at the moment is simply just, you know, stay alive, work together, and just, you know, have a happy life. Our goal is for, for peace. Swamp. We want peace. Yeah. We want swamp. peace. After the meeting was adjourned and nearly a third of the world's population gone, tensions were higher than ever. I teleported everyone back to the regions, but Fluffy had one final message for me. The Eastern Orthodox sand people will rise up and we will spread the gospel of sand over across the entire world, just like the dust clouds of sand brushing over the hills of any country and sending those to the shock. The sand people will take over. We will become victorious. With day two coming to an end, day three was anticipated more than ever as the next part of this experiment was about to unfold. It was now time to see which civilizations would flourish while other civilizations crumbled to the ground. This next part of the experiment opened the gates between each region, allowing the exploration of the small islands. These small islands contained massive amounts of enchants, diamonds, tools, and gear, but one in particular had a chest containing a mystery item, and let's just say you wanted that mystery item. The desert were some of the first to leave their region. They headed out of the swamp where they met up with goblin leader Waff. We have a reason to hate the tundra because they killed one of our fellow more oh. SMP members. How could they? Maybe we could team up some way, to, not necessarily to take them out, but to negotiate why they did it. Oh Lord, great king of the swamp, would you, would you allow a few of my ambassadors and a few of my personal guards to traverse with you to your great palace to discuss this matter? I will allow five people to come with me. With hatred towards the tundra, it was decided only five members of the desert were allowed to traverse the grounds of the swamp. Suddenly, after reaching the goblin headquarters, one of the desert informants announced that the tundra was beginning to invade the desert. So Fluffy and Waff swiftly led a march back to the Dryad grounds, starting the first biggest conflict of the server. The Vikings were quick to explore the small islands as well. The island between the desert and Tundra, however, contained some of the best loot, but at the risk of death. This island was floating above the void, so if you fell, well, GG's. It contained plenty of diamonds and gear, but also that hidden secret. Tucked away in a locked chest lay a book named Manifesto. When you tried to read the book, it was encrypted in Morse code and needed to be deciphered. When it was cracked, Act, it read, Welcome to the test. Keep this a secret between us, as there is a great reward for only one. Your word 
Trinity. Confused about this so-called reward, coordinates at the bottom of the book eventually led some of the Vikings to yet a second book. This one was strangely encrypted differently using a code known as letter numbers. And once deciphered, it read, congrats, you have found the second book. Sometimes it gets lonely in the world, but then I remember to not forget Serenity. And again, another set of coordinates was at the bottom of the second book. The last book, however, was trapped away in the Earth's core, and the only way to access it was to march straight through none other than the desert and mushroom plains. So that's what the Vikings did. And when a few dryads noticed the army of Vikings invading their region, they called the Alliance of Swamp and Desert to return home. War was building, and the only thing keeping an all-out attack was one wooden bridge. Everybody, everybody, behind me. All my men, all my people. Tundra, would you like to explain why you came into our territory unannounced? Hey, we have our weapons put away. Oh, that's, away. that's very cute they say to put our weapons away, you. considering that you have killed one of our allies. This is just a big misunderstanding. We are, we're just passing through. We're, we didn't mean to intrude or anything. We're not here to start a war. We haven't killed anybody, and if they did kill them, they're not us anymore. No, get off the bridge, yeah. Just, they get off the bridge, careful. get off the bridge. Tundra, I'm coming over. So I was informed, and I just found out about this, that apparently one of our members was killed by one of yours. The blood of the swamp members on your hands. We smell it. I think you just smell sand, man. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I think, think you've been too much sand. sand. <laughs> I, I think, I think you've been the sand Well, too much it might have it, it might have also been the blood mood. So oh, if we can no. hunt down and kill Fern, y'all fine with that? Fern? Yeah, we're fine with peace yes, if you guys yeah, do that. Yes, not yes, Fern. Fine not with our Fern. Fern. It's Fern. Yeah. Hey, I was on his No, we're gonna we're gonna kill um you know um Wimpy Fern. Someone just tried to blow us up. Come with me, Waff. Come with me, Waff. Come with me. We're out. Who just tried to blow us I up? Literally Whoa, what's happening? What's happening? Yo, it's like Perfect. 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 Let's go. Okay, let's go. 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 let us you know, desert, and one of our guys accidentally killed one of the swamp guys. So we really have no control over that. Some of the Vikings and a small group of goblins decided to meet back up at the now destroyed bridge. Charge! Charge! Go, 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 go! Charge! Kill them all! You warmongers, come here, you cowards! You cowards! Submit to the sand! Death is all that remains! <laughs> There's no negotiation, run! <laughs> There's sand in my lungs! Hop in, hop in! Go, 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 go! Back at the sand temple, Wa found G Cat and was trying to figure out what had happened. Look, I'm gonna be fully honest with you. I was trying to kill the Tundra leader because I thought There's they were no about to attack. So you put a so TNT down. That's what I, I was did saying, not put the TNT down. With the group not trusting what G Cat was saying, he began to run away. However, while the group chased G Cat, Wa was communicating with one of his own named M31 to cause a disturbance in the desert forces. He ordered players M31 and Cryobolic on a rogue mission to hunt down and kill desert members, and they were successful, taking the lives of two players named. Named Melon of the Week and Star Wars. Floofy was not happy about these executions. Waff would publicly banish M31 and Cryobolic from their lands, showing Floofy how he was still aligned with them, but on the inside, he was cheering in the success of their mission. Now trapped in a hole, G Cat was finally captured and interrogated. How did the TNT go off? Give him sand. I, I how did somebody how else set it off if you were under the bridge? I don't know how it went off. And the I TNT was, was also trying. under the bridge. Drown him in sand. Am I the only one that sees the holes in his oh. in his argument? I Place know, the man. sand and let it decide its fate. <laughs> the sand will decide your fate. <laughs> this is amazing. He, he had passed. a shovel. He had a shovel. He has surpassed the sand test. Through the skin of his teeth, his life was spared. Led by a player named PenQX, a new small independent group known as the Kelp Munchers feared for their lives. They didn't want anything to do with these regions as they were about to go to war, so the group took refuge in the tundra on one of the floating islands. Leader Perpy didn't like his odds, so he climbed up and met PenQX about a potential truce or alliance. So what's going on? Basically, I have a big hit on Hi, Cherry. You don't know who to trust, so we just created an independent. You have a hit on 
me? I have a hit on me. No. Oh, on you. Okay. Yeah, I have yeah. a hit on me too. Yeah, I, I'm why, don't we all, why don't we all just team up and call it a day? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, why don't we all just chill? It was decided these two nations would truce and take on the rest of the server. Heading back to the Viking village, Perpy was greeted by none other than desert members Untick and Baked Potatoes. Fed up with Floofy's dictatorship, they decided to align their beliefs with the Kelp Munchers. The final riddle book named Redemption was discovered and brought forth to Perpy. This book used an at-bash cipher, and when deciphered, it read, The thing about space is you don't know how far it goes, but I will take off and go far away. Time to light up the world. Take these materials and show the others who's on top. May this provide you with the strength you need and guide you and your team to infinity. One final task at hand remained. Throughout all three riddles, the players needed to keep track of three specific words, of which only one word was found in each book. While MTK was trying to crack the last code, some of the desert members decided to invade the tundra. With their plan totally backfiring, the group decided to retreat, leaving a couple of them to fall to the swords of the Vikings. Actually, I think we should go kill some people. The desert were back with great numbers, and this would be the first major battle of the tundra. Heavy casualties were accumulating on both sides. The Kelp Munchers were slaughtering those who were alone, while Perpy was clashing with none other than Dictator Floofy. Kill everyone that tried to invade us. Yeah, charge him. Go for Floofy! Oh, oh shit. Not looking good here, bro. Go back in. We have a, no, we have a bunch of yellow. We have a bunch of yellow in land. I'm burning the leader. I've I got him on fire. I died. Alone and afraid, Floofy would scatter to an abandoned island. Herpy held his ground and successfully defended the land of the Vikings, winning their first major battle. M31 and Cryobolic found ex-dictator Floofy on their island. Filled with rage and corruption, Floofy began striking the two goblins. After some fighting, M31 would end up drowning, so Cryobolic had to take on Floofy in a 1v1. Come. Members from all regions gathered for the final battle of Floofy's head. None other than Pen QX would take on the mighty Floofy. Oh, thank you guys. Oh, that, so I told you you would never get the heart of the people. My only goal this event has been, has been to kill you. I don't You'll never get that. Low on hearts, Floofy had one option, run. He tried to swim and boat away, but the crowd surrounding the fight would begin to chase and hunt him down. Here's that. Dead. We got him, boys! Yeah. 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 The Vikings were now on the hunt for revenge and stormed the beaches of the desert region. Crossing over the bridge in the Mushroom Plains, they were greeted with nothing but abandonment and ruins of a once strong dictatorship. They'd burn everything down, signifying the collapse of the desert. Shining bright in the sky, MTK lit the beacon, signifying the completion of the riddle. What are your three words? The three words um, are infinity, serenity, and trinity. I'll be right back. Yay! Oh, yeah, we got it. Do trinity. That. Oh my serenity. god! Oh, oh, infinity. Oh my god. In the cloak oh, of lightness. Oh Alright, well. Well, I know which team is to choose now. After receiving his rewards, Waff believed MTK was a part of the Kelp Munchers as he contributed to helping him crack the code. To his extent, he wasn't, but Waff wouldn't know that. Returning home to the Viking village, Herpy called for a meeting only for the Tundra members. Since the beginning of the civilization, Tundra came together to make a promise to stay unified till the end. The remaining swamp and desert members took refuge with the Kelp Munchers, and everybody gathered in the village square. I want to murder every other nation, you feel me? I want to win. Mm -hmm. See, I, I win. told you! Mm -hmm. Tundra wants to kill everyone. Yeah, Desert wants to kill Tundra. Swamp hey, wants to kill their own Kanto? goddamn leader. Hey, can someone kill Kanto? He's talking too much, man. Hey, yeah, if y'all if y'all kill Kanto, we can have peace. Help! Help! Thank you. Herpy knew this was reaching the end game. He was trying to come up with a game plan when he was brutally interrupted by something unexpected. Waff would storm through the village, taking heavy fire from Pen QX as he tried to assassinate him just moments ago. Screaming for help with no answers, Waff's fate was met by the sword of Pen QX, and the leader of the swamp region was now dead. Retreating away, Perpy declared war on the Kelp Munchers. This would be the final battle, the battle of Vikings versus Kelp Munchers. Perpy's army began attacking anyone who wasn't a part of the Tundra. Tundra, kill everybody, please. One by one, the number of Kelp Munchers dwindled, and Perpy's army was taking the lead. If they don't have a blue name tag, they're God. The slaughtering continued, killing the lives of about 10 Kelp Munchers. With a fractioned army, they were forced to back up and flee the mass amount of Vikings. You're never gonna have the heart of the people. Left alone, Pin QX was thrown into a 1v3 with none other than Leader Perpy. Lackers, you get your guy, I got my guys. Yeah, yeah I got you. Hey, hey, Dynamite. Uh, I'm Dynamite. Running, I'm, running, I'm, running, I'm, running, I'm low. I'm low. I, I, I'm low, man. I'm low. I'm trying to fight you guys on land and not be. So I, I just want to be remembered as not. Okay, you can be remembered by letting me kill you. The roar of thunder rang in the ears of the players. MTK would be murdered, shifting the tide of this war. Tragedy would continue to strike the Vikings as Perpy's armor began to crack. Fearing for his life, he began to run, but was pushed down a cave. This is where he would make his last stand. 
NQX and traitor Lackers of the Tundra would take the head of Viking leader Perpy. Escaping the cave, PinQX and his fellow Kelp Munchers would slaughter the remaining Vikings not aligned with them. Only nine remained, and with so much bloodshed, the remaining players joined together to create the Pact of Peace, forever ending the war. They were victorious, winning this civilization under the name Kelp Munchers. And again, if you'd like to participate in future events, make sure to subscribe. Bye!